uh, we all know what happened here 18 years ago. And, of course, the first Friday, the second Friday, I should say, but the first baseball game back in New York uh, after 9-11 was the Mets and the Braves. It's a famous game. We all know about the Alfonso walk and the Piazza home run. Todd Zeal, SNY, was in the lineup that day for the Mets, and uh, he joins us on this uh, sad day. Todd, uh, it's surreal for everybody, for the fans in the ballpark, the broadcasters, and obviously when you went to Shea that Friday night, it had to be sad and uh, very strange for the players. Give me some thoughts there. Go ahead. Yeah, it was one of the most unusual and emotional experiences I think I've ever experienced um, in sports or in life. And I think a big part of it was that we had come back and played a game in Pittsburgh. Um, we had gotten the opportunity to go down to um, ground zero. And the guys you see right there, Ventura, myself, Robin, um, and Mike Piazza, Al Leiter, Johnny Franco, got to spend some time. Uh, with the first responders, uh, spent some time with some victims' families. And so by the time we got back ready to get on the field at Shea, um, I think we all felt this loyalty to the community, this sort of bond with the first responders and the families, and this need to get back and do something that felt normal. And um, we were just, um, you know, shocked and amazed at the way the city and the fans responded that night, considering all the trepidation going into it. And um, there was a lot of emotion. You saw that those first pitches and then they announced the lineups and we sort of in an impromptu um, action, greet the, the Braves who are arch rivals and, and we're fighting it out with. Um, it was something that was uh, unique and it didn't feel like a, a playoff baseball game. It felt like um, a moment in time that we would all never forget. And the Mets were only a game over 500 going into those uh, games against Atlanta, but still in the race. But this game had special significance outside of a pennant race. Todd, was there extra pressure? You trailed most of the night. Was there extra pressure to win this kind of game based on the moment in time? Well, I, I don't know that there was extra pressure, but I certainly think there was a deep desire from the team to find a way to pull one out for that New York crowd. Um, the first responders, as I said, were in – um, you know, in the stadium, families were there. And uh, after the Liza Minnelli um, seventh inning stretch uh, rendition of New York, New York, where the fans went crazy, the players stood, the first responders kicked like uh, something out of a chorus line. Um, I think at that point, it, we were ready to, for this place to explode. And um, even in that moment, you see Mike's, look on his face when he comes through and touches home plate and comes and gets greeted by the players. There was this sort of thought that are we, are we allowed to celebrate? Should we be smiling? Should we be happy right now? And that, that sort of moment was just, Hey, let's all embrace this and take this in and, and watch this crowd finally feel like something normal was back in their lives. And listen, as uh, no doubt about it, it's the biggest home run Piazza ever hit, and it wasn't in a pennant race necessarily, and it wasn't in a World Series and atmosphere and everything else. At least in New York, it's the biggest one. And you got right back in the mix that weekend, and then obviously the following weekend too. But that team, you know, was missing a little something, Todd, that 2001 Mets team after good years in 98, 99, and 2000. That team was missing a little something, but you captured something on that particular night. You know that? Yeah, I think that would have been an amazing story, especially considering the way the Yankees season was kind of progressing. And um, wow, what, it would have been an amazing story to have us finally figure out a way to get past the Braves, who had just been so you know difficult on us at the end of that 2001 season. They just found ways to beat us in late innings and uh, spoil it. But um, yeah, we, we were we had thoughts and we had. You know, we had a confidence after that uh, moment. We, we had gone on a really significant stretch to get from, I think, maybe a 12 or 14 games under 500 in August um, to within um, a game there towards the end of, of getting back into the, uh, the division lead. So um, great season, interesting season, but that was certainly um, the culmination of, of everything that year and probably in anything that I can recall in my career on the field.
And uh, this edition of the Mets team, you can't uh, you put a stake in them. A couple of times you thought they were dead, and maybe they still might be. They may have done a little too much damage. Cubs, the Phillies at home, whatever the case. But two good wins against Arizona, and they put themselves in a situation the Cubs can't get out of their own way and everything. And they still got a chance, um, you know, need help, but have a chance. Every game is significant. This Mets team here in 2000, same kind of record as your team did 20 years ago. This Mets team, what do you see right now here down in the last 15, 18 games? Yeah, there's been a lot of similarities. And I, I earlier in this season, and as the seasons progressed during certain stretches, I've made some comparisons to that 2000 team and the 2001 team, and the comparisons are more so not about the foundation of the team and the build of the team, but some of the guys that have come off the bench and the depth of the lineup and finding ways um, to produce in big moments, whether it be Dom Smith or J.D. Davis, who's become a legitimate. Um, you know, big league player and, and a rising uh, batting star to the, this sort of emergence of Jeff McNeil and the sort of um, the progression of, uh, of uh, uh, Rosario and then the absolute phenom, um, Alonzo. All these things are like, hey, there's not one thing you can point to. They just find ways to keep it going and believe they're very resilient and like you said, they, there's been times where we thought we were putting the last nail in the coffin and they kicked the coffin open again and said, hey, we're not dead yet. And Believe they've hung us. in there. Now they've done a nice job. Would you have a problem if you're Ramos for Syndergaard? Tell the whole world he want to pitch to you two weeks to go in the season? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that is something that shouldn't be um, said. I think it's unfortunate that it became public. I don't know exactly how it did. That's the thing that seems to be mysterious is that Noah says that he had a behind closed doors meeting and, and then it ends up in the press. How did it get there? Which is really incidental to the fact that, um, you know what, if, if he has an issue with Ramos, it, so be it. Uh, he, he talked about that earlier in the season with Nito and then uh, he had some success with Nito, but he had some uh, lack of success with Nito. And then he had a couple of really good starts with Ramos and was praising him the way they worked together, the way he called the game, and then a bad start or a, a, a bad start or two, and then he wants somebody to blame again. So I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, it's a shame that it, it has to come to that because they've got too many other good things going on right now and too many other things to concentrate on that they don't need any divisiveness at this point in the season. 100%, Todd. Keep up the good work on SNY. A pleasure. Thanks very much today. Appreciate you coming on.